I wouldn't start it straight away. We'll uh, get some viewers. And... Oh, then I'll, I'll make some. Um, I'll, I'll make some stringers first. Yeah. Because okay. I need them for this. I need. Um, I need stuff for this. So, Kate, where are we? We've got a. We're live at Uptown Tribal Studio in Bisbee, Arizona. Quick little tour here. All these fabulous things that Kate's made in collections over the years. And Kate, you just sort of describe what you're up to, really. And if we get any questions coming in from people watching, I shall... Uh, I shall chat. We shall get them asked, yeah. So what I want to say is that today, on my messy work table, <clears throat> creative mess, I'm working with Italian rods. I'm working with effectual rods. But one of these days, in the not too distant future, I'm going to change my table completely. And I am going to show you how I work with stained glass scrap, which is a lot more unusual and a lot cheaper to acquire the glass. And it's an absolutely magical process. But today, I'm just about to make some latticino and a handle for a bottle I'm going to make later. So. Some latticino and a handle for a bottle we're so going to do. And this is one of your you lamp touch... work bottles, isn't it? We're going yes, to have a look at today. Yes, I touch my chair or I'll throw a tidy tantrum. There we go. <laughs> Oops. I'm going to take this black. I'm just going to make a kind of a stripey thing to go on the handle of the bottle. Looks kind of cash, in a way it really is. Because the You're whole pressing point, quite hard there, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. But I'm keeping the back of the glass black. You see what I mean? I'm keeping muscle on the on the actual little skinny part because you can't have it so soft that it just flops around. Oops. Now, when you're when you're heating your next piece of glass, always point it away from yourself because otherwise it's going to jump into your lap. And that will not be funny. Got a question here from Christine. She says, if you had to choose, would you prefer silversmith or, or the glass making? Do, oh. do you have a preference? Oh my God, glass making every time. Every time. Now watch this. There you go, Christine, every time. Oh, look at this. This is one of your stringers. This is, this is it called, it, it, we sort of loosely call it latticino. Latticino actually means white and clear because latte milk, but we kind of loosely call twisted glass latticino these days. And this is a this is just what the, and people in America call this a twisty. <laughs> they call it a twisty, but you know, um, that's just a kind of a loose term. I need a little bit of fat here for the handle. I'd forgotten I was doing that. Don't forget to project as much as you can. There we go. Talking. Yeah. So now I'm going to make it very, 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 very thin because I want that very, very, very thin at the top of the bottle around the neck. So I've got a little bit of fat there for the handle. And then I've got the very, very skinny, tiny, skinny, skinny twisted for the neck of the bottle. So that's just preparation right there. That little thick bit there is going to be the handle of the bottle. I see. If I carry it off. All right, so now. So you can just put that straight down now you've made it. That's put completely that straight down. set. Yes, it's it's and, not, there's no special treatment. No, not at all. It's just and you're just get, clipping off the end there? Yes, and I've got to get, it's got to be cool enough for me to use later. So what sort of temperature does it get up to and, and how I'm working cool? at 1500 degrees. Okay. And um, now I'm just going to kind of start globbing up some glass for the, for the matrix of the bottle. So I'm going to hand it over to this hand to get myself a mandrel with a nice big fat mandrel because we like bottles that have a decent s size hole in them. Now I have to heat up, I must pull up my sleeve. Ugh. I have to heat up the, the mandrel very thoroughly before I start because if, I, if it's not heated up completely, then when you put the glass on it, bubbles burst into the into the into the bottle and all is lost it just doesn't work so i've got to make this glow and i've got to keep this happy this happy little fellow going too so we're getting closer and closer 
Come on, got to really warm that baby up. I've actually, oops, that was a mistake. I've actually Ooh. got to, it's no problem though. Happy no. accident. Oh, no troubles at all. Just keep, just pretend it never happened. Actually, one of the whole, one of the things about glasswork is what separates what we call the men from the boys on this one is that if you make a mistake, it's the recovery that cannot often be the art form. So that's about hot enough now. What's the telltale sign? What do you mean? What, what tells you that it's hot enough? Um, when it's glowing, when I can see it all glowing. So now I'm going, to start the, I'm going to start putting the glass on. You put the glass on at a complete right angle so that the top of the bottle is straight. And then you can start to move the glass down. And as you move the glass down, if you watch my hand, I'm rotating the rod so that... Your wrist is I'm, staying still. Yes, and I'm rotating the rod which gets... melts the glass in a convenient way where, it's, where the heat is under the rod it's cooler on top so you have to keep rotating it and now my fingers are rotating too much so i'm going to start again all right then so this may not be the the finest bottle you've ever seen but that's because you know when you're filming it's like la di da but i'm onto it i hope that the rod lasts long enough if it doesn't i'm going to put another color on top because that could be lovely too matter of fact i think we're going to be all right now what I do when I'm making a bottle is I leave the end. I sort of imagine that air's got to come out of it somewhere, so I, I kind of leave the end for a while. The other thing you always have to remember when you're doing anything is to go back, make sure everything's warm, because you can forget where one part of the bottle hasn't been in the flame for a while, and I'm sure that many of you have experienced that when you go back, click, pop, the glass cracks. So I'm building some body. And now I'm going to finish that little end there. When you get to this length of glass in your hand, you're beginning to feel the heat of the rod. Let me tell you. But I like to build a nice lot on the end, sort of beyond the end of the mandrel because you need to have it thick and strong there. So let's see, let's see, I'm just going to do one more brave swipe before I get burnt to cinders here. There. So now, I've got to find my happy little tool. If any of you have seen my films, you know how much I love these. What tool is that? Well, it's, it's a graphite paddle, but it's a long skinny one with a wooden handle and it's just very darling. So now I'm just rolling it to get it kind of smooth. And now I'm going to decorate it. And I thought I would do something kind of simple but fun. So Take some of this. This is a shard. This? It was once a big bubble of glass and the, the lines in it are silver. So it'll kind of sparkle a little bit maybe. But it's... I'm just going to lay some down like that. And maybe a little bit more here. Almost like a film print onto that, yeah? Yeah, that's it. Now I've got to centre it again because I let it get... You can always centre it again. So this is going to be quite a simple one. I make them pretty complicated from time to time, although complicated as compared to what. And I have a little thing here. This is a little graphite thing and I'm trying to just sweeten up the hole at the bottom. Make it nice and even with this. Just a useful little tool. Now, I'm going to take my first graphite, uh, my first graphite, uh, this wand. No, I'm going to decorate it first. Let's hang on, let's see what we're going to use. I'm going to run some stuff around. And you've got, how much time have you got at this sort of stage? I mean, does it matter if the, if the initial lay cools off too much? Are oh, you no, playing with temperature? All, you've got to keep it all together. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just... So you can't, you can't put it down at this stage oh, no, and come no, no, back no, no, to no. it? No. I'm going to take this little... This is a little stringer. It's got a stripe in it. And I'm going to kind of lay it along the design. 
and then you know you, should, you can get arbitrary with it. Just makes a little sweet thing there. Then I'm going to take. Ha, ha, ha. There's one. This will have to do. It's, it's a bit thick. This is a little magic wand, and usually they're thinner than this, but I've been a bit. Here we go. You heat one part. Just heat it up. Blow it. When you blow it, it cools out the glass and allows it to break off. Otherwise, it's kind of soft because it's been in the flame. There. Gonna put another one in here. And I'm gonna fill these up with something fun. And I think I'll put another one just here for fun. Didn't just like that. And you're almost twisting as you as you just go in there yes. to swirl you go in, that. You hit, you hit the spot. You hit the spot a little bit more than the rest, so it gets soft, and then you can go in and do that. So if you're just joining us, Kate Drew Wilkinson here in Bisbee, Arizona, is just demonstrating one of the more I mean a nice simple yeah. essential oils lamp work bottle here. We're about. What, two thirds of the way through? Oh, no, not, I, not no. even half. I don't oh, think not that. even half. Fabulous, fabulous news. So, what I'm doing is I'm necking it. Then I neck it with a bigger one. And I keep necking it. And keep, keep that end. You can't let that end get forgotten. You can really see that shape develop. Get it nice and hot, give it a nice old roll. Oh, that baby. See, we're beginning to get a pretty little top to it. There. Now the bottle's beginning to be nearer the end line. Now, I didn't sort out my, um, my chips before I started because that's the kind of girl I am. But I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take kind of a simple striped chip. Very simple. Keeping it warm. I'm going to flash this with my wonderful Japanese tweezers. Put it down and squish it flat. Just leave it there for a while while I find some other chips that please me. Difficult. Not a good tray. Here's another one. I make all these little bits, you see. And then I fall in love with various sundry different ones. So I think I'll use this one. We're doing quite a plain little bottle. Probably... Nothing's plain with you, Kate. <laughs> Heat it up. Squish it flat. Roll it in. Don't lose the shape of the rest of it. Here's another one. Get a grip on that little dime. Flash it in the flame. And what does effect is flashing it in the flame? It warms have? it up so that when you put it in the flame, it doesn't just break into lots of little bits. If you just put it in the flame, it would explode. It has to be pre-warmed. Where, um, Christine asks, okay, where you would uh, purchase the tools for shaping the neck of the bottle, this uh, Okay, that you've just you can go here. to... What, we're go talking to about this. Springs. You, if you, you all must know Arrow Springs. Arrow Springs. Call Arrow Springs and ask for the graphite. They're kind of graphite rods and they come in various sizes. I've got three or four sizes. The girls at Arrow Springs are just awesome. Oh, and by the way, when you're using this, the one I was using just now is pretty, ooh, too hot. What happens is... <laughs> <laughs> they get is, hot, Christine. They get hot because even when you're not using them, the heat that's been rolling around in the flame creeps up the rod. So what I do is I often put it here like this so that the heat stays up there. Look, I've got a new fat one, which I haven't used yet. I toyed with the idea of showing, showing you that one, but I thought I'd better have a little practice. So that's there. Arrow Springs. Where, Arrow where are they Springs. based? They're in, they're, uh, they're in California. There we go. And they are, I'm just looking for a narrower one to make the, uh, oh my god, I don't have one, do I? Oh yeah, I have to use this one after all, a bit thick. 
Okay, so you see, this is a, rather a little bit too thick, but I'll show you. You take, you take, when you want to make a shell, oh, uh, this is the fun. You see my shells in everything. You just make yourself a little dotty, a d dotty spot like that, and then you just go into it and twist it. This really is awfully thick. Chris okay. Christine says thank you, and I'm sure, th well, thank you for tuning in, Christine. This is fabulous fun. We'll be doing lots more of these live. Kate, you're rustling about. <laughs> It's a proper one. working Here's gallery. Do you see this little skinny thing? It's much better and it should be longer, but you put it in the dots that you did. I don't know if you can see with the angle of the camera. Let's give it a go. But I've got one more, I think. Yes, there's one here. Do you see this one? That was one of those little striped pieces of cane I put in. To make it into a shell, I go into one side of it and I give it a little twist. And it turns into a nautilus. And depending on the fanciness of the shell, of the, of the original shell. You can, you, you can, if you look at some of my beads, you'll find some of the shells have got a little bit of glitter in them, all kinds of things. So now we've done this, it's pretty simple, and I'm going to do, I lost my wand again, so the sun's gonna have to be. When I do a sun, I make cane with a yellow center, I stripe it with orange and red, and when I've finished, they look like this. Excuse my dirty hands, they're covered in graphite. Those are suns. And now, remember this piece that I made earlier? It is gone very deep. It's, there it is. It's uh, here. Yeah. Now, happy days. Here's one we made earlier. Uh, yeah. So oh, what yeah. I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it here. Remembering to keep my bottle in the flame. What have you used to cut them there? Because is that a special, I mean, do you worry, ever worry about it shattering? No, no? Hard, I don't know what they call them, but that's the good one. Just easy There's slippers. another one that's kind of like two wheels, but it's not nearly as good. Then I'm going to cut this here because I want to have access to where I made the handle. No, yes, I'll do this first and then I'll do that. Yes, well, you know, you get a bit dithery when you're doing this kind of thing. Okay. Under pressure, you see. <laughs> so now I'm going to, and by the way, it's always a good idea to alter your flame according to what you're doing. You don't want to have too hot a flame for some things, and you don't want to have it too cold for others. Okay, so now I'm going to put an edge around the top of this bottle with matching glass. I'm going to keep it in the flame and move it around and clip like that. Right. And like I say, if, if, I, if I could, I would have, and I have, ooh, no, that's not it. Hang on, hang on everybody. There we are, that's better. All right, so I got that going. Now, I'm tw twizzle the top and make it nice. And, you know, you can join these up tightly, but because I'm going to do what I'm going to do, I don't have to. Keep this nice and hot. Make sure it glows from time to time without it actually melting anything. Keep it kind of hot. Then you go in here, what I do with my bottles is I like to make a pretty little top. So I just make these little twirlies. If you look at my bottles, you'll see this is kind of a habit of mine. To make a little twirly thing at the top of each one. Keep it hot, keep it hot, keep it hot. I go in there, like that. Just fancy them up. You can do anything you like. You could actually, instead of this, I could have taken this and dragged it around and it would have made a kind of a houndstooth design instead. There's lots of things you can do. It's all about breakthroughs. It's all about trying things out and just being totally inspired. All right then. So now I'm going to cut this off here. This is always the bit that I'm really messy with. And so I have to have the right tweezers handy, about which I will tell you shortly. Uh, Christine, all of Kate's work, available work, uh, is either here in the gallery or available online at katedrew-wilkinson.com. Here we go with the handle. Put it on. Now there's lots of people who do this better than I do, but I do it. All right, put that down. 
take my special little tweezers. Oh, take this. You're going to push this in, basically attach it. Don't go away, my dear. There. Then I have tweezers with, this is something you can have made. Get some tweezers and have a point made. There was a very, very great, great glass worker called Jim Smirsich. And he turned me on to that. So it's a, res a, a reversed set of tweezers you're using there with a point at the yes, end. Yes, and they, I'm sure somebody can do it, but I had mine made by, by an old Czechoslovakian couple who were making tools for a surgeon friend of mine in France. And he had them make those for me. But Jim Smirsich in the uh, Arrow Springs could probably do it. And I want to round out that sun a bit more. It looks a little kind of unhappy. Make it a little rounder. Yeah. Now, one of the things I really like to do at this point, if I can find it in a hurry, is I really like to put a few little tiny stars around in my work. Teeny weeny, and I don't even know if it'll show, but I'm going to put it on the sun just for fun. A sun with a star, and hope that it manifests. Yeah, it's a tiny star, all right. All right. So now, the only other thing we have to do here is check it out. Make sure the handle doesn't get too flat in the middle, which means use gravity and use, your, use something in there. You can use any tool to, round, to, put, to, put, to make round off that handle, actually. Then, guess what? Oh, if I don't I know what. <laughs> if I can find them, my signatures. I like to sign things. So here's a little teeny, I've got to turn it around because at the moment it says KDM. Turn it around. Now, I have to tell you, because somebody's going to ask, don't you make your cane? I can. Lauren Stump taught me how a long time ago. But because I don't like doing it, you can find, you can go online, and there's somebody out there that will love to do it for you. I make my own eye cane, and I will show you a piece of my own eye mm. Right here, do that for them. Show them the end. Might be a bit tricky. Oh, I'll do it, I'll do it for you. You hold it. Yeah. Oh, well, let's get the fat side. Look, an eye. Just hold that steady. <laughs> it's tricky. Well, let me show you a dish of them. Here. I've got brown eyes and blue eyes. One of these days, if you're very good, I will demonstrate how that's done. And if you want to know without me, you can go to, I think, Lauren Stump. Lauren, L-O-U-R-E-N, Stump, has demonstrated it on film and you can probably find it on YouTube. I have finished the bottle. I'm going to just check it out. Make sure that everything is happy. And now it goes into my kiln. When can we see it under that light kiln. first? Yes, you can. Look at that. There's even a little sparkle in that. Yeah, now that's enough. It's got to go. It's got to go, isn't it? And so what does this kiln now do? Okay, so the kiln, I work at 1500 degrees and the kiln lives at just under a thousand degrees. And what I tell children about what the annealing is about is that anything that you make beyond a very small size, as it cools, the outside cools quicker than the inside. And what happens, it just cracks and dies. So if you um, put something in a kiln, all, the, all those colours that you saw me twisting in that bottle or in any bead, you're twisting these around. You're sort of traumatising the glass and stressing it. When you put it in the kiln at, at 900 to 1,000 degrees instead of the 1,500 on the top, 1,500 allows the, the, the glass to flow. When you put it in there, it really doesn't move or it doesn't move obviously. But what happens is all the colours and all the stuff that's going on in the bead have a little block party. 
and they all get to hang out with one another and introduce themselves to each other. Like a marinade. <laughs> exactly. And when they're chill, not cold, but chill psychologically, then you leave it on for two and a half hours, and then what I do with mine is I simply turn it off, and it ramps down. Now, there's lots of people making these to get all excited about exactly how you ramp down, and you can buy all kinds of computers that ramp down slowly. But I've been making beads now for 27 years. And um, I started with a pot of hot vermiculite, but I ended up with, with, I've had this for years, and nothing breaks. But I will tell you something quite funny about this. When I first started making beads, I didn't have a kiln, and I didn't know much about it. But I learned that if you have a crock pot with vermiculite in it and you put your when you take the bead out of the flame you have to cool it for just a little while so it's not tacky then you put it in the vermiculite and leave it there for hours but you can't do it with a bead that's that's more than about the size of a dime really but the nature company now here's a, here's something nobody knows the, na the nature company ordered 46 necklaces with 36 beads in each i leave you to do the math and it was a huge order, it was many thousands of dollars. And those necklaces are out there, all of them, somewhere. And I did the whole order in vermiculite. And, you know... Um, is this turning into a confession? Just be like, just be going, you did that, you did that, you did a, like a $30,000 order and you did it in vermiculite. Well, you know, I was living in Mexico, I didn't have a kiln, I've got lots of stories about how that all worked out. Fab. Any other top tips before we say cheerio for this one? We'll be back live with much more Q&A stuff like this well, in the I'll future. You, but Yes, what we'll, we'll see is that you really, this is a tool you really need to get. Um, and um, it's, it's tungsten. And right now on the tip of my tongue, oh, I do not remember who sells it. It comes from Japan, but you can look it up online. And then if you can get...